So this message of Sikhi, how did he spread it? You mean what mechanism did he use? He, he spread it. So so how he spread it? So one thing. So so he so so Guru Nanak was born also during that. In India, they call it Pagti movement. Pagti is called devotional period. So during that time, a lot of saints have come. You know, like I was saying previously, political condition was bad in India and religious condition was bad in the, bad in India too. So that is the Pagat Namdev. He described the religious condition at that time. Pagat Namdev was happened to be in Maharashtra. That, that is like southwest of India. So he says, Hindu Anna Turku Kana. And that's a Shavad in, in Guru Granth Sahib now. So he said the condition has become that much that, that mostly Hindus, they have become totally blind. They don't even understand what they're doing. He said even the Muslim, the, the, the Turk, they have, they have also, they have like one-eyed people. So they are also, also stuck in that mindset. He said, you know, I, so he said, they, Hindus go to the temple, they think the God is there. Muslims go to the mosque, they think the God is there. He said, I only pray to the God which is not confined to the temples or the mosques. So the, because Sikh philosophy is that God is everywhere. Right? So, so that was the overall thing. So a so, so lot of the saints happened. They were trying to spread the same message, even Pagat Kabir, Pagat Namdev, Guru Nanak. So that's why we even have their Gurpani in Guru Granth Sahib. But Guru Nanak, he tried to do some of the things different. So his way was that, so he first, he, he traveled, he traveled the world. When he traveled the world, he took his message, he spread it out that, that don't do these, these blind rituals, you know, be, you know, do some meaningful prayer, some meaning, meaningful simran, and do your honest living. So it's not about don't, you know, he, he said, that is the con context of the yogis and all who will leave the world and then live outside. So that also to me, coming back to your original question on the Sikhi, it has multiple aspects that you have your core, inner part, spiritual part, you have to keep on making yourself better and better. Then you have, then at the second time, you have to live like a normal life. You have to make your own living. You are not like yogis and sadhus, they will go live in the jungle, but then they are not self-dependent. So we have to live our ordinary lives. And then the third thing is that we have to do the community building. Then, you know, that is why we have the Gurdwaras and the Langars and, and all those things. So Guru Nanak, he traveled from country to country, place to place. He spread his message and also he talked to some great saints. He, he himself also learned. So it's not Guru Nanak was not just a teacher. He himself was also a Sikh. So he himself was learning. And then eventually he traveled almost 15, 20 years of his life. Then eventually he settled when he was around 40 years of his age. So he decided to put all his practice because that's what he figured that, that if I teach them something, people are going to forget over some time. So he, de he decided to do something unique that has not been done before. He established a town called Kartarpur. Kartar literally means God. So it's a God's, God's town, Kartarpur, which is now in the Pakistan. So he established the the town where he brought the people because that time casteism was a big thing you know people won't even you if you are from a lower caste you can't even sit next to the person the upper caste and all that you can't talk so guru said no everyone is come here you come here you live we work together we cook together we eat together we live like a one family so that is that is the that to me is the very very powerful method of guru nanak that he not only gave the message to others, then he himself worked with them. He himself worked in the kitchen. He himself cook, cooked the food, worked in the kitchen. He, he, then he himself would eat with everyone else. He said, I'm no more special. I'm, I'm just like you. So that was to me that very powerful message that, that he really showed us by example. This is how you have to live Sikhi. This is how you do it. So that actually ties into my next question. Um, Langer, so what is Langer? Can you just define it? Like, so okay, so what is Langer? So, again, uh, so normally before we go into the Langer, so I would like to go a little bit background of before Langer, what was there before the Sikhi, because Langer concept to me is a is a is a, is a quite different concept as compared to other religions. 
although a lot of us you know we 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 seem to fall into the in, in, into that that trap of that when trying to compare all the great religions you know you talk about you know christianity you talk about islam or hinduism they have a concept called you know that the charity concept you know charity concept or feeding the poor where you know the their their religious texts say that if you do if you feed the poor people you know you should give them the clothes it is good it's a good deed and it counts as a good deed for you maybe in the next life or or in yeah, or after this life in that you will get heaven or you get a better life next ne- in in the next life so guru nanak's approach is that yeah that is fine it it is okay you you should keep doing that but there is a fundamental issue with that the the fundamental issue to me is that is the ego is imagine if you are going out even some sometime then i say if you say i am going to feed you know some 100 homeless people today you go there you you prepare the sandwich you go there you you feed them then somehow on your way somewhere in your mind is going to come oh i have done such a great job i fed i fed these 100 people god knows if it wasn't me they would be starving now you know that so guru nanak says the moment that thought comes into you that defeats the purpose now what is langar langar is not that you feed the poor L- the way if you want to talk about langar is that you cook at your home you invite those 100 people into your home and you say you are my guest i am going to eat with you that is the langar that is how it is different th- different than than the concept that is why in the langar we never say you never feed the poor anyone who says langar is for feeding the poor that is wrong we feed the guests we are, so they the, the people is is not feeding we are not even feeding langar is not feeding we are sharing we are sharing everyone is sharing in fact i was in 3 uh, years ago i got a chance to go to pakistan and kana sahib gurdwara so there are there are only about 250 300 sikh families so i was there early woke up around 6 7 am for the breakfast time i went there for the for the tea and then i saw something unique for the breakfast because they don't have a huge money income or anything to cook the food everyone there all the most of the 250 families all the people come to the nankana sahib most of them at around 5 or 6 am and they everyone brings cooks little bit food at their home afghan bread or something they bring it there they bring it there they they put it in the langar and then at at 7 am something after the ardas they all go there and then they then they serve the same langar to everyone they kind of they kind of mix it so i was there so 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 one of the founders so because since they say oh, you are from america no don't be we will make a special langar for you know don't need to eat there i said no that then that will be defined the concept of langar i want to eat the same that everybody is. so that is the concept of sharing so langar is sharing it is not feeding the poor it never is so uh hope i answered your question so but you you can really ask me because sometimes i have this tendency from going from one question into a little bit uh, uh, in a different in a different direction so what for people that don't know what langar is what happens during langar uh what do you mean what happens during langar like how how like what what is the process like if you went downstairs into the langar hall uh-huh. what would you see so you mean what i typically see or what i what should typi- see what i mean what you should see <laughs> so i will explain you okay what 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 from 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 again from guru nanak's perspective so when the so so lot of thing again guru nanak he when did he envision the concept of langar so he was you know we all know the sakhi but he i think he was about 18 year old when his father gave him 20 rupees 20 rupees at that time was a lot of money it's like more like 10000 dollars in today's in today's uh, currency so it's like 10000 dollars he gave them that go do some true business so so i know that that the sakhi somehow is mis- misrepresented in a lot of way we all heard sometimes that he, he fed a group of sadhus and he came back that i always questioned that because guru nanak he did not even like the way sadhu sadhus lived but the reality i when i was went to the pakistan i visited there so we we drove from nankana sahib to 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 that place is called shekhupura so there is a so where the gurdwara gurdwara sacha sada is that is there so the shekhupura was an old ancient you know what you call you if you know about the silk road it was a 
it was a town on the old silk road it was a very you know trading post so as you know in a typical trading you know city there will be a lot of rich people there will be a lot of poor people also so it had a it had a slum area that slum area was called chuhad majra at that time so there all the slum people all the poor people were living on the side of the city and then sometimes people will have some some diseases incurable diseases at that time they will also move them there so the the condition of that that part of the city was terrible you know like like even now in the modern sometimes you go to bombay and all or brazil they say don't go to the slums area they are terrible guru nanak decided to go to that area first he was supposed to go to the where the merchants that that you get the get the things for the 10000 dollars and then come back to nankana sir to resell them that that was his father intended it to be so he decided there so there he met he might met certain there were certain sadhus were also who were doing the uh, helping them but they didn't have much much money so guru nanak said here is the money 10000 dollar that you take it you you can do whatever you want to do those sadhus they were they were the really the wise people they say no we don't want money we want you to help us so then guru nanak he went to the market he brought them the clothes brought them the food he cooked in the kitchen he he stitched their clothes so guru nanak stayed there for 6 months because 10000 dollar is a lot of money so it wasn't not a one time deal so 6 months guru nanak actually so he stitched their clothes and all that he took care of the sick so that to me is the kind of concept you can say that the it's like a what we modern day we call pilot project on langar that is what the that is what you know you can say langar initiated but then later on later on the the really formal concept of langar to me in came when he established kartarpur sahib some like more than 20 years later so that is where the idea of langar is that everyone you work together you cook together you eat together so again this is this is not a even now there is a lot of research has come into that modern research says that they they say that as a family or as a group when you eat together you establish deeper connections so there is something that said that's within our genes when we eat together then we build we build that relationship this is the modern science says so they that's why they say eating together as a family is very important but imagine guru nanak he said whole all of you are my family so all of us we will eat together so so that is that is that is what that is where the langar is but so so to me that so la, there is nothing you know that to me the langar's purpose is that establish equality so we are comfortable eating together we are like our brother and sisters but there is nothing spiritual about langar okay. so that we have to be clear about it so just by if you're if you're going to gurdwara just by eating langar or, or or eating you know or or even doing seva that's not going to make you wiser student the same way you can go to your school you can volunteer in the cafeteria but by volunteer just volunteer in the cafeteria you're not going to 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 learn about you know math and science you have to attend classes so 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 gurdwara is a place of learning it is it is not a place of worship we six we do not worship anything we we listen to gurbani we practice gurbani we do naam simran on gurbani we do not worship that is also a wrong concept lot of people say gurdwara is a place of worship i said no it is a place of learning so the idea is that to me that even in modern thing langar is okay you should serve it but the focus should not be on langar the focus should be on the divan on the, on the listening gurbani singing gurbani learning and all that it is food okay when you're hungry you can go ahead eat it but i i see sometimes people get very religious about you know that oh we have to you know uh, we have to do bhog launa pehla you know they have to take take it to guru uh, inside then 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 they do okay first guru eat then i always question them so do you think that you know when guru nanak or guru gobind singh they were doing the langar they they would be saying that okay i have to eat first you guys eat later gurus never did that so sangat eat eat first in fact guru amar das established that you guys want to listen to me first come first go sit eat the langar then you come to me because his point was that if you are not comfortable sitting with the people then there's not much point of you won't be even able to learn anything from me if you are not even comfortable so that to me is that we need to de emphasize langar is important it is integral part of our community but it is not the main it's not the main thing in any gurdwara it 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 has to be secondary main thing for us is the gurbani is the learning